Welcome! Venus retrograde is happening in 2015 from July 25th through September 8th. There are a few weeks before that and a few weeks after that where Venus is going to be in shadow period. So we may see some similarities, some things starting, rising, finishing up in that shadow period as well. Um, therefore this reading may extend on to its shadow period. I wanted to do this little introduction um, to say a little bit about what Venus retrograde is. First of all, Venus is the planet that governs over beauty, values, love, and so when it is going retrograde, it is going through a revisal um, phase. It's it's moving backwards. It's reevaluating things, changing things around, tweaking things from the past and our current um, situation to to make it better um, for the next cycle when Venus goes direct. So I will be talking in this reading about those areas specifically, money, um, self-value, self-worth, values, and love, as well as beauty. <clears throat> I want to recommend for anyone who has their birth chart and knows their moon and venus sign that you choose the video of your moon sign and the one of your venus sign to listen to but if you don't have that information or you just don't want to and you'd rather listen to your sun sign go for it go ahead depending on how deep you want to go how much information you want from the readings you could listen to um the moon sign video, um, the one for your rising sign, as well as Venus and the sun. It just depends on how much you want, to how much time you want to spend, and how much you want to hear. Because I think there are going to be bits of information for um, for you in all of those. All right. So thanks for listening to the introduction. Here we go. Hello, Turinians. Okay. So I'm going to lay down two cards for money, two for love, two for values, overall values two for self-worth or self-value, and two for beauty after I do um, a quick general look here. So, there go. That's interesting. Okay. All right. Politics. Source. I think for some of you, this this phase, this Venus retrograde, is really going to be about um, getting real with yourself, getting real with others, and that you are in romantic relationships with. Looking at where you have been too faced and manipulative, where you've been hiding things, and um, just putting on a mask, or whether it's to protect yourself or to try to get the results you want. Um, so, have a certain outcome. I've been doing it out of fear or confusion. Or just have it. Maybe you don't aren't even aware that you've been doing it. Um, it looks like there's going to be some sorting of that. It's going to be coming up. Um, probably have a light shown on it um, for some of you. I'm really, I'm getting like business. Say business too. Um, I think love and business are themes for this um, season here. And 
it's going to be about learning to come from a more honest place with yourself and everyone else. It's like there's a choice here. It's like, okay, this way or this way. You connect with source and you get your energy and you manifest things and you live connected to this, this way more, or you keep try to do this stuff and uh, do it all on your own and not worry about your connection to source, um, be in the ego world. So it could be about trying to balance this out, balance out the ego and you know, the spiritual self and find a peace and harmony there. Um, for some of you, this isn't going to be about you. It's going to be, well, you're, it's not going to be coming from you um, as much as it's going to be reflecting back to you. So it's going to be like subconscious stuff and you're going to see it reflected back in other people's behaviors. So you're going to have um, shady stuff, liars, um, deceptions, people um, masquerading like they're happy when they're really, you know, there's something else going on behind the scene. Um, <clears throat> also, love, the lover's card. The story with the lover's card is, it says that there are three levels of love. There's the most basic level, which is the most ignorant level, it's the most um, immature level, which is based on lust and codependency. Um, and with that, there's a lot of low vibrational, unpleasant things that occur, jealousy and um, envy and trying to control and possess each other. Um, getting your self-worth and self-value from the other person, how the other person sees you, what's going on in your relationship with others, um, not having a strong sense of self-worth or value without that, so when there's rejections and things like that, my turbulence. Then the next level is where we're in interdependent relationships, where you're fine on your own, you have self-love, you have self-worth, self-value, so does the other person, and you come together and um, co-create things. Okay, and then the third level is where <clears throat> you expand your love and compassion out to encompass everyone. You are unconditionally offering um, love and compassion to the universe as a whole, without discrimination to anyone. So, um, this could be referring to lessons. I'm not going to try to get too specific because, you know, there's a lot of tourists out there and um, I don't know. So, you know, this could be lessons and situations um, coming up for you to change your paradigms around these situations. And yeah, so it might be about recognizing any of this that you've got going on and that you maybe have been looking at it a different way and now you know, Venus Retrograde is going to shine the reality light on it and show you, you know, what it really looks like. <clears throat> I do get the message from this though, that if you get confused, um, and even if you don't get confused, it's a good idea anyway, but just to understand and know that like source is here for you, you have source energy within you, and um, it's an invitation to connect with it, to take time to connect with your inner power and your true inner power, I should say. Not the type of power where you trick someone and you win but the true power that realizes that we're all interconnected and um, can feel safe and secure and love 
Um, it's really indescribable. It's something that you just have to feel. You can't really describe it to somebody. But being in touch with, with source energy, source within you. Um, okay, so I'm going to let that be the general message. And now we're going to pull the specific cards. So money, money, love, Love. We have values, general values, values, self value, self worth, and beauty. Okay, cool. A lot of repeat cards from the Aries reading that I just did. I'm going to shuffle the cards better next time, but I think that the reason for this is because a lot of, um, a lot of sun signs who are Taurus are going to have other uh, planets in Aries and vice versa. So if you have your rising sign or if you're a Taurus sun and you have your rising sign or, um, Mercury or Venus in Aries, you may want to go listen to that as well. And um, it, if you have a lot of planets in Aries, you may want to go listen to that as well. It doesn't matter if you're reading this for, um, it doesn't matter if you are listening to this, you know, you're a Taurus moon, but you also have Aries planets, go listen to Aries as well. So inclined. Okay. So many we have the rebel and we have a um, burden card so I think for some of you you're you are going to be or you have been contemplating taking some sort of rebellious action quitting your job um, those types of things some sort of rebellious action around money because you're feeling worn down and abused, you're feeling like you're taken advantage of and what you've been doing to get money, or this can work the other way around in giving money um, and what others are expecting you to give. If you're feeling like very little of it is actually for you and you're feeling very worn down um, and mistreated. <clears throat> They've been thinking about taking some sort of rebellious action. And so I think um, for a lot of you, this is going to be a theme of pondering throughout Venus retrograde, um, looking at what your alternatives are, uh, searching for alternatives. Um, doing some journaling about it, releasing tension, um, eyes full. Yeah, looking at what you can do to feel more free, feel happier, um, more like yourself, more alive, more your own master, um, master of your own destiny. So for some of you, um, if you're thinking about starting your own business up, I, just a word of caution, Venus retrograde generally isn't the best time to start a brand new business pro like project. Um, it's a better time to like evaluate it, um, to reevaluate where you're at, to, to think about it, to do research if you want, but I wouldn't go out and launch something generally not a, not it, it's against the tide it's it's opposite currents would be something against the tide is what I'm saying um but if you've been thinking of doing that you could certainly like do things to get yourself ready to come out the opposite side of uh, Venus retrograde when it's over and Venus starts going direct again um then you might decide that you're ready to take that jump and kick this person off your back. So, 
system. I'm also getting the message to say, like, if this is about money that you're giving out to others in some way, it's like you've been helping your elder, you know, um, mother out, giving her money, or your children out, giving them money, um, you've been paying some sort of club fee on a regular basis, something like that, something where it's continuous, someone is expecting it, and you're feeling worn down, and questioning about whether you should rebel or not, free will and everything, do what, do what you will, do what you want, but I am getting a message to say, um, you may want to ex slow down and realize that Venus is retrograde, think about these things, think about how it's going to affect other people and yourself, and, um, you know, maybe give them a heads up that you're going to be stopping in the future that you're slowing down and you know maybe like after Venus retrograde done <laughs> um, that kind of thing all right moving on love we have postponement and we have playfulness so I'm guessing that maybe some of you have some stuff going on where you are too busy you find yourself too busy with work or um, studying or your responsibilities, things that you um, <clears throat> feel like you need to do to go out and have fun with your lover. If you're in a significant, um, if you're in a relationship, you have a significant other with your lover to have fun. Um, there's or there's been some sort of delay. There's going to be some sort of delays. Uh, this Venus retrograde, like you were planning a vacation and it gets canceled for some reason. Hmm. This can, I'm getting the word depression. Depression keeps popping into my head. I mean, this female, there's definitely an element of depression with this card. If you have been postponing things because you're afraid and you're just wanting things in your heart and you're imagining them, they're out there but um, you just can't seem to connect and make it happen. <clears throat> lighten up. Lighten up. Try to bring about the feeling you want. Never mind the details. Of, I want a boyfriend. I want a girlfriend to go out and have fun with and play games and enjoy the summer with. Never mind the boyfriend or girlfriend. Try to get the feeling by yourself. Just go out and have fun with friends. Go out and have fun with yourself. Try to get that same feeling. Uh, enjoy yourself. But I do see like some sort of potential postponement delay, uh, especially with some sort of fun activity that you had planned or that you were expecting or hoping for. That doesn't mean that it won't happen. It, you know, it may have been delayed for a reason. Um, okay. So then we have values, overall values. Whew, heavy cards. We've got clean to the past for that one, along with guilt. So I think the message from a lot of you with this is to use this time, this energy that's available during Venus retrograde to do some serious house cleaning of um, your memories and past experiences, things you've been clinging to, holding on to. Um, feeling resentment or feeling guilt about because they're really weighing you down and obscuring either obscuring your view of what you truly value in life what is truly important to you and who as well. 
or confusing you and causing you a lot of frustration um, about being able to attain them and how to attain them, how to um, attract the sort of people into your life that are of value to you, that you find um, valuable, and um, you know, achieve the goals and things like that that are really important to you to, to live in alignment with your values as well. Looks like you may be getting to a point where you're about to have a breakdown or a breakthrough. It's, this energy is just intense and it's definitely been building for a while. So, um, anything in the past that you have been unable to let go of that still that haunts you like a ghost because you feel guilty for some reason or another um you might want to do something about that whether it's see a therapist whether it's journal whether it is apologize to someone about it something to release this inner child work I'm also seeing that like you may be feeling consciously or subconsciously too guilty about your your values changing to allow the natural current um, of them changing. Like your values, what you used to value and, and what you now value may be different. You may your values may be changing, and you may be kind of putting the brakes on that, trying to like be in resistance in resistance to that because it could mean all kinds of things. It could mean that you know your best friends aren't really going to be your best friends anymore. You're not going to see them as often. They're going to become more like acquaintances. It could mean all kinds of things um, that you're taking on as your own issues and problems, and feeling guilty about it, and kind of questioning whether you have a right to allow these things to change or not, and you do. So, heavy stuff there. All right, moving on to personal value. So this is your self-worth, self-esteem, how you value yourself. I'm seeing success, which is great. And I'm seeing fighting. So, hmm very interesting. All right. For some of you, this might be that like during Venus retrograde, you're going to um, have some success with things that you've been fighting, um, mental battles that you have been fighting for a while. Um, am I worth it? Am I not worth it? Type of thing. Um, I'm ugly. No, I'm pretty. Things like this, um, you may find success, you may break through, break out of that. Success is impermanent though. Like everything else except change, basically it's change. Um, the only constant is change, right? Everything is in a state of motion. So our successes, they're great, we should celebrate them and enjoy them, but they're temporary things. And I think for some of you, maybe to a large extent, your self-worth and self-value have been coming from winning some sort of struggle and then accomplishing something. And it's not really truly authentic self-esteem. Um, it's not like you're loving you for you and unconditionally. There's a condition on it. It's when I win this battle, when I ace that test, when I um, get enough money to buy this, when this happens, when that happens, then I'll love myself enough. Then I'll feel good about myself. 
And so you might be having situations turn up um, to have this theme highlighted or give you opportunities to make some changes in this area um, and learn other ways to get a sense of self-value, self-worth, self-confidence. Okay? Because it can be stressful, fighting, a lot of reasons for that. All right, so beauty. This is cool. We've got the miser and possibilities. I think for a number of you, this is going to be about having lessons that allow you to... For some of you, you're, you've been placing... I'm just going to say this. It sounds very rude, but it's how the message is coming in. So. For some of you, you have been placing your attention and concept of beauty in really shallow places. Um, beautiful jewels, beautiful jewelry, beautiful um, you know, iPhone, beautiful car, beautiful hair, beautiful um, clothes, material things. You've been thinking very, very much that beauty is about material possessions, acquiring things, what people have, what do you have. Um, and this is a whole nother, a whole other sort of beauty right here. This is like, this is the majestic beauty, the, the magical beauty that's beyond material. It's beyond what you can grasp and hold in your hand. Um, it doesn't wear out over time. It's a, you know, it doesn't rust or tarnish or fall apart or turn gray. It's it's the sunset, it's the sunrise, it's the feeling of freedom, of um, being in nature, the way the wind feels, it's possibilities, it's the, the beauty and the miraculousness of the universe, the abundance of the universe, um, beyond material possessions. So I think there's going to be some lessons offered for you to, to learn to further your spiritual evolution, your growth, um, increase your happiness as well, ultimately, with this. Um, for some of you, I think you're going to see other people in a different light than the way you were seeing them before. All of a sudden, it's going to be like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize my girlfriend was such a gold digger. Or, Oh my gosh, when did my grandmother become so materialistic? You, they've been like that all along, but you just really didn't notice what's going on there. Um, of course, for some of you, it's apt to be like people are changing and becoming a little more clingy, um, feeling a little more uh, scared, uh, need to hoard, that kind of thing, and you're going to um, do perception. It's going to be altered. So it might be, you know, like you saw people, you thought they were really beautiful, and now you're seeing some ugliness um, that you didn't see before. But, uh, I think there's also some beautiful opportunities here for people. Um, who feel so inclined, who, you know, when I say this, they're like, yes, that's right. Or later on, they're like, whoa, pick me type thing. They're like, yes, that was, that message was for me, okay? If you're not sure, maybe you shouldn't do it. But I think, like, giving away some of your excess, some of your wealth, some of the things that you've been clinging to, um, your riches, your possessions, that kind of thing, sharing, giving away, it's going to make room 
for new opportunities that you're going to find beautiful. Like, I, I don't know how, but you know, stuff like, oh, you go drop all your stuff out off at a donation center and then, you know, somebody is offering, is asking you if you want to go to another country and do volunteer work and, oh my gosh, you always wanted to travel there and it's like this beautiful place or, you know, stuff like, <laughs> I know that one sounds far-fetched, but you just look at the energies of these cards. I see for some people, it's like, if you stop doing this and you, you release that need to cling, you're going to have your arms open and empty and the universe is going to come in and give you a hug and you're going to be like, oh, what a warm, beautiful hug. This is great. Okay. Possibilities. Beautiful possibilities. All right, so we have two more cards for you still, Taurus. These are going to be animal totems, most likely. This is from the White Eagle Medicine Wheel deck. There are grandmother cards, grandmother guidance, grandfather guidance, and totem cards as well, but most of them are animal totems. And so I'm going to pull two cards for you, and these are going to be spirit guides or spirit helpers for you. These are animals or these cards have a message for you if you choose to, to accept it if you want it for the famous uh, retrograde phase this year. There we go. Okay, you didn't get any animal helpers here. We've got, we've got Reverse Stargazer and oops, Provider. So I'm just going to read these out of the booklet. Grandmother Stargazer. Right. Reversed. The necklace reversed could mean that you have developed too narrow a focus on life. It's easy to lose your sense of perspective if you allow yourself to be bogged down by the um, minutia of the daily round. Remember, spirit is to be found within everything. Look up to the stars and into the mysterious cosmos. See the beautiful necklace I give you, the red coral for Mother Earth for nourishment, turquoise for Father Sky for protection. Each bead is like a string of stars, and you are one of them. Maybe wearing a necklace like this would remind you of your cosmic origins. I am an ad. Okay. And as, <laughs> as well, um, just having those colors around, some turquoise and some like coral red. You know, if you're a man, you don't want to wear a necklace or whatever. You're a woman, you don't want to buy a necklace. Okay. Just bringing those colors in might help as well. All right, we've got provider next. I believe this is a grandfather card. Yes, grandfather provider. The teaching I have for you is to have gratitude and respect for all life and all that you are given. Take nothing for granted. Take only what you need. Providers must ensure that everyone is fed before eating themselves. What kind of provider are you? The provider must determine the need, spiritual, mental, emotional, or physical. Nurture, love, happiness, and security. Such are the needs of all. How do you care for yourself? Do you eat wholesome food, get enough exercise and rest, take quiet time to reflect, meditate, and nurture your inner being? Take this purifying protective sweetgrass. It is healing medicine, and it provides nests for small creatures and food for animals. Its sweet fragrance fills the air, bringing you a time of gentleness, like sitting in a meadow at peace with nature and the world. Um, little message that came into my head and put out there. It might be a good time for some of you to do like a, um, a 
clearing. Um, burn sage, walk around your house, do space clearing. All right, Taurus, thank you.